Բարի երեկո արկելի առազատներ գրգին անգամը հավասինք և եր հերթական գարքով մի ասին ենք։ Այսօր մեր մոտ կա թեմա, որը թերևս մեր ձրակիրներու մեջ, գամ նինիսկ մեր ընդանիկներու մեջ, գամ շատ կիչ, գամ երպեք չէ հանագանոն մեծացման, թե եվ եթե նաև կկտնվին ինչ-որ վայրեր ու մեջ, ինչ-որ գազմագերբություններ ու հսկողության դակ, այն ու ամեն այնիվ ընդանեկան սերի և չերմությունը գպացագայի այդ երեխաներուն և մենք � անցնավորություններ, որոնք կներգայացնեն երկու իրարու հետ կործով գազմագերբություններ, մեկը գոչվի Carolina Adoption Services, իսկ միշկը գոչվի Orange Sucks, նարնչակույն կուրբաներ, եկեք և ողջ ունենք և լսենք, թե ինչ ունին � those children to families who need children, children who needs families, children who need families for their own growth, love, care that they need. Carolina Adoption Services and Orange Socks uh, organization. With us tonight are Ms. Phyllis Stevenson and Mr. Gerald Nebecker. Good evening one more time. Good evening. Glad Good evening. to have you here. And let's talk about this touching sometimes thorny topic when children are for any reason for some reason are without families and we all understand that a family is the building block of humanity and human life mm -hmm. children need families mm -hmm. families need children yes. what do you do in that regard what does carolina adoption services do would you please Carolina Adoption Services is an agency that has been in business now for 25 years. We're a small nonprofit, and we work solely with families to bring children to their forever homes. So we work with children who are in orphanages, who for some reason do not have a family, and who are growing up in an institution. And then we try to find families who can open their homes and their hearts to love a child and let a child come in and forever change them and they will all come together and be more wonderful than they were ever apart because children were really born to be part of a family and we don't want our children to keep growing up in institutions. So that's the whole mission of Carolina Adoption Services is to help needy children, to help bring orphans home and to support families to have the best life possible through adoption. Apparently, no matter how that institution is good and well and taking care of those children who lack families for any reason, that cannot be the substitution for having a family. For which, of course, I would congratulate you for the idea and we will see or we will hear at the same time some additional details how this works. But in this case, also, I would like to know and our viewers to know what is uh, Orange Sox does in this regard. Because as I understood, you're a separate entity that yes. contributes to the process in their own ways or make it sweeter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've, we've partnered with, with, um, with Carolina Adoptions to tell the story. So what Orange Sox does is it, it, it will tell the story the, of parents that have adopted. Hmm. And, um, and we, we put it out on our social media sites. We, we have a lot of eyes that look at, at the Orange Sox, uh, various social media sites, to tell this, this wonderful, inspiring uh, story of people that have done it. And the reason for that is to give others courage. We realize that there are many people that might be thinking of adopting, and hopefully by watching a story of someone that actually has done it, that, that will give them courage to take the steps. We are not an adoption agency, but we tell the stories of those that have, and then they work with Caroline Adoption to, to do the I see, I see, and uh, it's pretty nice and touching what you do as well. Because, yes, it takes courage to take that step and adopt a child whom you've never seen, whom you've never known, 
well, without even considering their ethnicity, color, origin, whatever they were, whatever the reasons were that they don't have families and so on. However, it would be interesting also to know why it is called orange socks. What is the correlation uh, here? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, about 40 years ago, there was a, a woman that was found killed in Texas and all she had on was a pair of orange socks. So instead of calling her Jane Doe, they called her orange socks. Well, when I was reading about that story, it, it touched me because it's been 40 years. We still don't know who she is. She's a stranger. No father, no mother, no aunt, no uncle, no friend, no girlfriend, boyfriend has come forward to say, where's Susie? We miss Susie. So to this day, mm -hmm. we don't know who she is. In, in my opinion, it was she was emblematic of children that are thrown away or put into orphanages or dis discarded. Mm -hmm. And so in her honor, I named this, uh, this organization Orange Socks. And so that's, that's why it got the name Orange Socks, because I thought it was fitting um, in, in her honor. Well, the name itself is kind of a vibrant name. Yes. However, after knowing the reason why and how it was called orange socks it makes it more touching and more i would say delivering and up to the point point. and i guess this is, would be the best moment to watch what we have i think there is a story there too about this process itself <laughs> Families need to know what a wonderful blessing it is to live with a child with special needs. The best way to tell them is by showing them what it's like. That's why Orange Socks, an advocacy organization for children with special needs, is teaming with Carolina and ABC Adoption Services to help provide the stories and resources for these families, to give them the courage to take the amazing and rewarding journey to adopt a child with special needs. It was Jeremy at once that asked me, would you be open to adopting a child with Down syndrome someday? Because we talked about adopting a lot. And I remember stopping and thinking, um, no, I don't think I could do that. I definitely think that's important to talk about because I think a lot of people don't have experiences and relationships with people with Down syndrome. So it creates this fear or a little bit of um, intimidation because you don't know what that's like or what living with Down syndrome is like. And for me, it was because I had never really known anyone with Down syndrome in my life. I, people often will say things, um, I think, to, to us and, and other parents who have adopted kids, especially kids with special needs, and say things like, oh, you guys are saints, or you're awesome, or, and things of that nature. And I really don't think that's the case. I, I think that, you know, we, we had something. <laughs> yeah, that's right, she's telling, she said, they're not. It's not a big deal. It's not scary. I think that's one of the first steps and the first barriers that, that a lot of people uh, don't realize. I, I can tell you from the personal experience that I've had and the, the experience of many men that I know who've um, adopted a child that it's, it is a wonderful, wonderful way to grow your family. You know, we always had a justification like, oh, well, the kids are really young right now or, you know, we have this big thing going on this next year, we need to save for that, or we don't have the money for it. You know, there's always gonna be reasons to say no to something. But if you're being drawn toward adoption, surround yourself with people who have adopted and talk to people about the resources that are available. I think for men who are who are on the, on the fence and, and maybe aren't feeling that emotional uh, draw to do it, I would just tell them to take that step out, take that leap of faith, and you won't be sorry that you did. Maria is in every way a miracle and a gift. We feel our family has been given a great treasure in having her as a daughter and a sister. Our boys will often tell us how happy they are that Maria is in our family. They adore her and she couldn't love them more. She brings so much joy, smiles, hugs, and laughter into our home. She absolutely makes our family better, more loving and more full of grace.
really very touching, very meaningful, wonderfully delivering the message. A few minutes ago we were saying it takes courage. It takes even more courage to adopt a child with special needs. Next time you get in touch with this lady and gentleman, this family, please relay our greetings and respects and love to them. We're going to talk about this a little later. However, in less than 30 seconds, Caroline Adoption Services has been in the, in the business since 1993, you said, right? Yes. That's a pretty long time and pretty rich experience. What took you to Armenia? This is the question that I would love to start with when we come back from our break. And we expect an answer that is enough touching and equally touching like the previous answer, like what we just saw. Possible? Yes. Few minutes, we'll be back. We're back and we're still together, together with Phyllis Stevenson from Carolina Adoption Services and Gerald Nebecker from Orange Socks. We did hear that really touching yet funny story about orange socks. We'll be back to Carolina Adoption Services. You've been in the business for a while. Now you are, as we saw in that, in that little clip, you have been dealing with children from Armenia. And especially in that case, it was a child with a special needs, with Down syndrome. What took you to Armenia? How did it start? What happened? What is your experience? How does it taste? So our agency started working in Armenia in 2005 and we started working with the same team that you will meet later, uh, Ms. Vardui. Um, she started working with us in 2005 to help bring home children from Armenia to forever families here in the United States. 2005, you're in talking 2005. about 13 years. Yes, mm. and so we have been bringing children home from Armenia through international adoption since 2005. Uh, we have had many families and many Armenian families adopt internationally. As we have worked with Armenia and have learned so much about their culture and been so impressed with this team, when we started looking at the stories of children in Armenia, there are many sibling groups. There may be a child who's two and one who's five and one who's seven, but because they're siblings, many people do not want to adopt them. But they're wonderful children who want to bring their family into the life of another family. There are children there who are seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, who just want a family. We were in Armenia last month and we visited five of the ten orphanages. We had children take our hands and say, please, go find me a family. We had a beautiful 16-year-old girl come and sit with me and tell me how sorry she was that now she was too old to be adopted internationally, how she wished that had happened. We had young siblings come to us and say, please, can you find for us a family? We saw young babies sitting in carriers, some very healthy, some with Down syndrome, some with other needs, who are sitting in a wonderful orphanage that has great food and clothing and a staff who cares, but it's still an institution. And babies don't cry in an institution because you can't come and you don't get to be individualized. You don't get to be all you can be. You don't have that mother, that father, those people to wrap around you and see you as a unique individual. All of these children yearn for that. It is a hope that burns in their soul. And we know there are families out here. We know in this community there are Armenian families that would have the love in their heart and would have the ability to help these children come home if we can just be brave through collaboration between our team in Armenia, our partnership with Orange Sox, to come out and share the stories of these children. And then with the expertise at Carolina, help review the families, make sure that these families are families who can adopt, that, that they can provide for these children, that they are stable in their home, and that we, through our support services, we can offer training, we offer therapy, we will follow them 
completely through the adoption and in post-adoption, and we want them to be successful. We are here just for their future. We know we can't bring them all home, but for every child we can bring home, their world changes, that family's world changes, and the community is richer because we have brought this very special person in who has changed everything by the life they live in that community. The story we watched tells a lot because it wasn't a family that they didn't have children. They were in need of having a child in a family. Apparently they had four children, four children. already mm -hmm. and they adopted a child with a special need. Mm -hmm. And Orange Sox, since you are the storyteller, mm -hmm. And I believe you're in that same trip in Armenia. Mm -hmm. yes, and you have seen, because there's, there's yes. a tracking record now, track record now, you've seen some families who adopted children. Can you tell us a story or two of a child who had been adopted and the difference that, uh, of, of that adoption that brought to their lives? Well, in that, in that story in particular, but, but this is, theirs is uh, typical of, of several. And mm -hmm. so what we see are when the children uh, get adopted, uh, well, one thing I want to, to, to reemphasize, families make a difference with the children, absolutely. But the thing that I've learned in telling the stories is how much the children have affected mm -hmm. the families. Mm -hmm. That there's, there's, there's a blessing both ways. So that family in the clip, they, they consider themselves the luckiest people in the world to have adopted her. Now, of course, Maria. she's, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, and she is very lucky to have them. But what we see in these, as, as, the, as we tell the stories, is, is repeated over and over. The, the children may be withdrawn in the orphanage. They may not be assertive or communicative. After they get adopted and they're loved, they smile, they're healthier physically. They, they, do, they do better. And sometimes, and what's interesting is some of the, some of the children ha, have been labeled special needs. Mm -hmm. When they get adopted, some of those special needs go away. Now, of course, Down syndrome won't, but some of them, they, they think, well... Introverts, yes. shyness, and... And it goes away because now they... The, people thrive when they're loved. And, and there's no substitute for a mother and a father. Even though I, I admit that the, the orphanages in Armenia were wonderful. They were very well taken care of. I was very, very impressed. The best that they can do is still second to a mom and a dad. Yeah. Of course, after all, an institution is, a, is an entity that cares. I don't believe entities would be able to provide the love that it takes mm -hmm. for agree. someone to blossom, for someone to become who they were meant to be, for dreams to be realized or brought to reality. And that is something that you can only get from a family. Now, apparently, uh, Phyllis, this is a big legal process at the same time. And it's, it has its own international faces and aspects as well. Would you please tell us a little bit about the legal aspect? Because as we said earlier, some people might have the, the wish, the desire, the thinking about it, but maybe they try to avoid it because of the long procedure and the legal aspects and... They, don't, they might not have the courage, and even if they did, they would say, it's a big hassle. How do you help them? Well, the way we help them is, first of all, we are an adoption service provider, and we are authorized under the Department of State, and we operate under the Hague Convention. So we are approved to which do... Which is internationally... Which is mm -hmm. approving us to do international adoptions. We are also licensed in Armenia as an agency, and we have been there and met with their government and with the U.S. Embassy, and we have toured all the orphanages. And so we have a very strong working relationship that we understand the process, we understand what our families go through, and with our providers in country, we are very well prepared to help them in country. But the first steps would be, if you are interested and if you feel that call, 
that you would like to explore this is simply to reach out to our agency. You can reach us in social media, you can call, you can email, and we'll be glad to talk with you about your individual situation. Once you decide to do that, then there's a process called a home study where we get to know your family, we learn about you, and then in the home study process, we figure out how many children, what ages, if you're open to any special needs, and we begin to prepare you for that. In that process, we'll provide training, we will help you think about all the pre aspects. Pre and post, right? Pre and post, yes. So there will be training in the beginning, and then once you are trained and we have your home study done, we will share your information in the country, and they will begin to talk with us about children, and then once you are matched, then we will begin to prepare you for that specific child. We will look at the trauma that they endured in the orphanage, because I wouldn't want anyone to not understand. If you think about, if you grew up in a home with a family, if you think about all of a sudden that was gone, and you were taken and put to live somewhere else, that's a very traumatic thing that is. happens of to you. And so all of our children do have some trauma, and we have clinicians at our agency who are there to help families understand that, to understand what it feels like to the child, how they may behave, and to help them be successful with that child. Our agency is the professional bridge to help prepare the family. First, we screen them, get the home study, prepare them, train them, and then we walk with them mm -hmm. through the process and post-adoption. When they finish post-adoption, if 10 years from now, they need help when a child is going to middle school or is 18 and they want someone to talk to, they can still call us. We can mm. offer counseling. We want to be there for the life journey of our families and our children. Uh, we had an event this last weekend and we had families come in who had adopted from several countries. We had older children there. And from time to time, we meet our children who are now adults. Apparently, it's a fully guided process. Every single step mm -hmm. is a guided process. So people can walk through this with specialists, with professionals who would give them the exact step to take after that step which is something, of course, appreciable. Now, we have, again, about 30 seconds. Orange Socks, you have experienced the stories. Those stories make a difference. And those stories are the live testimonials. In less than 30 seconds, what else can you say about uh, um, a child that has been adopted mm -hmm. and now they have siblings that are not with them yet? Is there a solution for that? Well, um, I mean, know it, I have a very short time. We can continue it with Vardu later on, but if you yeah. have any input. You mean if the, if the child has, has a sibling? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's a, that is a challenge that we, we're hoping to, to be able to get people that are interested in siblings because the children know they have siblings, and it's so important that they, that they are able to be adopted together because they know. And, 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 and children do better if they say, well, that's my brother, or that's my sister, and they care for themselves in the orphanages. Uh, that's the thing that I saw when I was there is that they, they did, uh, if they were within a close enough age, they did pal around together in the orphanages, mm -hmm. the, the two sisters or the two brothers. They knew they were a family. I would... Now, my time to confess that my question wasn't actually a question that required an answer. It was something that would trigger to deliver the story mm. so people would understand that if you have the ability, why don't you adopt two mm -hmm. yes. or even three if they are three? Because as you, Phyllis, said, the trauma of losing a family is a big trauma already. Now, losing a sibling and becoming separated, that's another trauma. So that is a story I guess you have to take care of for the next I don't know how long. Thank you very much. After the break, we'll come up with the rest of the team. So uh, I thank you for being here, and I wish you all the best. It's a great job being done. Thank, thank you, you for much. the opportunity to be here. And then minutes, we'll be back. Desakçı Harkeli Ayrı Nagisleri Dagavin Miyasin en Kiev 
the previous segment we had uh, Phyllis Stevenson and Gerald Nebecker. Phyllis Stevenson from the Cal Carolina Adoption Services and Gerald Nebecker from the Orange Sox. They told us about the organization, about the agency, and about the adoption process and the importance of the adoption process. Now we have been joined with two wonderful ladies who are part of the team and we now have Leanna Mills who is with the uh, Carolina Adoption Services and we also have Vardui Elbakian who is a lawyer and she's the supervisor of the California Adoption Services in Armenia. And of course she represents the Arec Art Limited Liability Company who takes care of the legal matters along with the, the agency here. So I guess we would start with you, Liana. Uh, earlier we were hearing about the home study and mm -hmm. the introductory processes and the steps. I guess you do have a role in that steps, in those steps, and you have a part in that process. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Would sure. you please? Yes, so my job is I talk with the families when they first call and they want to know about the adoption process and they have any questions and so then they work with our home study team or their home study provider mm -hmm. um, and then once they're completed with that then I work with them on their dossier which is a fancy word for a lot of documents that Armenia or the foreign well. countries yes mm -hmm. uh, requires mm -hmm. um, just it's like birth certificates medical certificates things just to show you know this is who we are as a family mm -hmm. and this is why we want to adopt an Armenian child um, and so I help them with that and then we kind of that's how we get the process going in terms of matching them with the child and again earlier we were hearing from uh, especially from Gerald mm -hmm. uh, the process is long and it's it requires a lot of uh, you know legal intervention mm -hmm. because it is an international process and this is a human life that is being handled being taken care of so uh, people who have the desire to adopt will start with you basically mm -hmm. Now, how do you describe an experience or experiences that you have had uh, that scared people, those thinking twice people, mm -hmm. or just having the idea but not exactly done with the idea? How do you overcome these, I would say, the first step fears? Sure. So I think in talking with the families and just, um, you know, saying what kind of children that they want to bring into their home and just kind of giving them, you know, the expectations to have or to have no expectations with adoption, being that mm. things might take a little bit longer than we expect or, um, you know, sometimes people have an idea that they're going to just have this perfect child from another country and that is simply not the case even when you have, you know, your own children. And I think that just kind of getting past those. Myths. I don't believe I was a perfect child. <laughs> oh, and perhaps Ask my you mom. Were. <laughs> and I think that those are some of the big fears are things of just, they are the unknown. Sometimes it's financial. And so there are several resources, several foundations that help adoptive parents with grants and non interest loans. And so that is something I also point them in the direction of those if that is something that is a concern for them. Which is a very, very important mm -hmm. thing, actually, because. You know, um, if I want to adopt a child, which is a call, yes. which is an internal desire to, I don't know, to show my affection, my love, my, however, the process could be complicated. I may not be able to have the financial means or I may not have the, the, um, the idea of how it works, how much does it cost, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And when they hear that this is how you are going to go through and this much it might cost you, people mm -hmm. might withdraw. Mm -hmm. And I am really delighted to hear that there is a help mm -hmm. out there, there is mm -hmm. a way out there, and people don't know about it because mm -hmm. this is not something that they face daily. It's not taxes, it's not, I don't know, mm -hmm. they don't face it daily. It, and it, I'm glad to hear that there is a way and there is there is support and there is guidance, even if it is outside the Carolina uh, Adoption mm -hmm. Services itself, all those organizations or institutions mm -hmm. or agencies that do part of the job and complete that uh, big picture, it's good to know. Vardui, uh, you represent the Armenian branch, I would say. You have uh, Yev took Irava Panek, took Pasta Panek. Yev Gabanek, Kalhavor Gabanek, 
ուրեմն Caroline Adoption Services-ի եւ հայկական ասենք մանգատներու կամ այս կորձակցության, կորձառնության, գարավարության միջև։ Այսինքն Հայաստանի հանրաբերության գարավարության մասին։ Խնդրում եմ նաև թուկ ցեր դիտանգյունեն փաստադրեք process-ը, կորձընթացը եւ ինչպիսի եւ խորուրդ եւ փորձառություններ կարող եք նաեւ բաժնեցի մեր դիտողների հետ։ Շնորհակալ եմ հանդիպման համար։ Այո 2005 թվականից դու կարդեն իսկ ներկայացրեցիք, ես աշխատում եմ Կարոլինա Adoption Service-ի հետ։ Ունենք բազմաթիվ ընտանիքներ, ովքեր արդեն իսկ որդե գրել են Հայաստանի Հանրապետությունից եւ այս տարիների ընթացքում կարող եմ ասել, որ դիտարկել եմ մի հարց, որը ինձ համար մի գուցե եւ մի փոքր ավելի ցավալի լինի, որ հայ հայաստանցիներ, ոչ թե հայաստանցիներ, այլ ազգությամբ հայերը շատ քիչ են, ովքեր ցանկանում են Հայաստանի Հանրապետությունից որդե գրել հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխաների։ Ներողություն ցույց եկ այստեղ փոքր փակակից բանը հայ ընդանիքները շատ ավելի քիչ են ընդհանրապես որտեքրելու քաղաքարին մեջ թե հայաստանից որտեքրելու քաղաքարին ոչ շատ շատ են հայերը ովքեր ցանկանում են հայաստանից երեխա որտեքրել սակայն նրանք ցանկանում են որտեքրել միայն մի միայն առողջ երեխաներ իսկ այսօր մեր հայաստանի հանրապետության մանկատներում բազմաթիվ են հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխաները եւ ես կարող եմ նշել որ մոտավորապես 286 երեխա այսօր ենթակա է որտեքրության եւ նրանք հիմնականում կամ հատուկ կարիքավոր են կամ խմբերով երեխաներ են ընդունեն քույր եւ եղբայրներ են երկու եւ երեք երեխաներ են կամ երեխաներ ովքեր բարձր են 10 տարեկանից մեր գործնեությունը մի մի անց հետ կարոլինա ադապշն սերվիսի հետ կայանում է նաեւ նրանում որ Երբ արդեն փաստաթղթերը պատրաստ են լինում Հայաստանի կառավարություն ներկայացնելու, մեր կազմակերպությունն է այդ ամբողջ գործընթացը իրականացնում։ Խնդրեմ նաև մանրամասնեք, երբ ասում եք Հայաստանի կառավարություն ինչ մասնակիցական ընտիտի կամ թորույթի մասին է խոսք, այսինքն որ մինիստրություն, որ նախարարություն այդ գործերը գտնում։ Ուրեմ առաջին քայլը, որ կատարվում է փաստաթղթերը եւ որոս ուղարկվում է արդեն մեզ մենք կատարում ենք ուսումնասիրություն մեր կազմակերպությունը մեր տնօրենի գլխավորությամբ կատարում են փաստաթղթերի ուսումնասիրություն որտեղ դեռևս մեզ համար բավարար չէ եթե կարոլինա ադապշն սերվիսի կողմից ուղարկվել է փաստաթղթերի փաթեթը եւ մենք միշտ չէ որ համաձայնում ենք որ վստաբար այս ընտանիքը համապա կարող է համապատասխանել հայաստանի հանրապետությունից երեխա որտեգրելու համար լինում են դեպքեր նաև որ մեր ուսումնասիրության արդյունքում մենք ասում ենք մեր պարտնյորներին որ գիտեք մենք գտնում ենք որ այստեղ կա բաց եւ մի փոքր էլիս կաշառնակեք աշխատելը որից հետո մենք կմտած ենք փաստաթղթերը կներկայացվի արդարադատության նախարարության կենտրոնական մարմին այսինքն երբ որ պատրաստ է եւ մենք տալիս ենք մեր համաձայնությունը ներկայացվում է նախարարության կենտրոնական մարմին կենտրոնական մարմինը պետք է տա իր համաձայնությունը եւ եզրակացությունը որ տվյալ ընտանիքին թույլատրվում է հայաստանի հանրապետությունից երեխա որտեգրելու իսկ այդ կենտրոնական մարմինը իր հավանությունը կուտա կամ չի դար ինչ հիման վրա եթե այդ տեղան որոշ այսինք բահանչներ կամ օրենքներ վստահապար ծեր գազմակերպություն այդ օրենքներին զանոթ է քիդակ է իսկ եթե այս տեղից ուղարկված այդ փաթեթը այդ օրենքներին գահամապատասխան է գետրոնական մարմինը որը նշում եք ինչ հիման վրա օրինակի համար կարող է մերժել ենթարկվել կարող է օրինակի օրինակով կարող են վերել մենք մի անգամ ունեցանք դեպք երբ դատվածության տեղեկանքի հետ կապված խնդիր առաջացավ ընտանիքը ըստ փաստաթղթերի ընտանիքի հայրը որտե գրել ցանկացող հայրը ուներ դատվածություն եւ դա արդեն այստեղ ամերիկա է այո ամերիկա է եւ մեզանից նրա ցուցիչ փաստաթղթ պահանջեց կենտրոնական մարմինը հատկապես թե ինչին է վերաբերվում այդ դատվածությունը որտեղ չի երևում մենք ընդհանրապես ստանում ենք փաստաթղթ որ անձ ունեցել է դատվածություն սակայն դատվածությունը մարված է հետագայում երբ որ ոչ թե մեզ մերժեց այդ ժամանակ կենտրոնական մարմինը այլ չքննարկեց մեր դոսիան 
ներկայացրած եւ լրացուցիչ փաստաթուղթ թող ուզեց մենք հարցում կատարեցինք եւ պարզվեց որ ընդամենը ճանապարային ինչ որ խախտման համար էր ունեցել այդ դատվածությունը եւ դա այդքան այո ոչ քրեական եւ բորը շատ լուրջ խախտում չհամարվեց եւ հետագայում տվեց կենտրոնական մարմինը այո ստացվեց եւ փարկաստո դա 2012 թվականին էր եւ մենք ունենք շատ լավ հիանալի ընտանիք եւ երջանիք երեխա Ուրախ եմ լսելու այդ բոլորը եւ քանի որ մեր այս հատվածի ժամանակը գրեթե գհասնի իր ավարտին շատ արագ հարց դանցես եւ գվերացանան կնքնիչում են ետ երբ այդ գործընթացը վերջնականապես գհասնի իր ավարտին եւ այդ որտեկրումը տեղի ունենա թուկ ցեր գարկին քիչ առաջ կլսենք որ գազմագերբություն այստեղ կհետեւի եւ կհետաբնտես թուկ ցեր գարկին այդ հետևողություն եւ այդ հետաբնտումը ըստ ցուկումը որ երեխան լավ վիճակի մեջ է կգադարեք Մեկանաբար իհարկե առաջին հերթին Հայաստանի հանրապետության օրենս դրության ընդհանրապես երեք տարի տարի է պահանջվում որպեսի մենք հետևենք երեխային եւ յուրաքանչյուր 6 ամիսը մեկ մենք ստանում ենք փոստադապշները այսինքն երեխայի վերավերած ստանում ենք համապատասխան բոլոր փաստաթղթերը ապրելը բոյը քաշը ինչպես է ուտում ինչպես է ամեն ինչ մենք գիտենք երեք տարի օրենքն է պահանջում երեք տարի Մի խոսքով մի խոսքով մենք կվերացառնանք եւ գշարունակեք մանրամասնությունները եթե պետք է բայց մի խոսքով այդ հետևողականությունը գա եւ երեխու փարորությունը հետաբնտվում է ըստկում է այո another few minutes and we'll back and probably we'll watch something as well Shamragink and uh, Liana people when express their desire to adopt they start with you or you start with them you start guiding them to the process we were hearing earlier from Bartley that there is something called the post adoption right mm-hmm. yes and by law it is required for the family mm-hmm. to provide or maybe the agency mm-hmm. to provide information and details how is the well-being of that adopted child mm-hmm. would you please elaborate in that regard a little bit from the from this side of the ocean sure so once families come home our agency has a requirement that um we their social worker would follow up with them in their home with their children um one month three months and six months after they come home and armenia has um also different requirements that we would send reports to them um every six uh, once every six years um following the child's um coming home and six so, years or mm-hmm. six months six years six years mm-hmm. and so then that's in, pretty hard <laughs> um in that way and so what it is is it really provides an insight for our agency it provides an insight for the Armenian government to show that you know these children are thriving to show that when they come to America they're not just quote forgotten about and that they are thriving in their homes and that these families truly love them and are taking care of them that's why i said it's it's should be very hard because it's not after 6 months it's not after 3 months it's not even after a year and then as you said mm-hmm. they might be forgotten they might be subjected to wrong mm-hmm. things i don't want to go there mm-hmm. after 6 years that means there is someone who is really following up and making sure that these children are in well caring loving mm-hmm. cherishing atmospheres and families mm-hmm. which is wonderful thing ais masin khuntrum em kavelatsnek Այո, որտեղ արդեն խոսում էինք post adoption մարոնաստուների մասին։ Այո, ես ուզում եի ներկայացնել, որ Հայաստանի Հանրապետության օրենքով ընդամենը 3 տարի է պահանջվում, որպեսի մենք ստանանք post adoption-ները։ Դա մեր որոշումն է եղել մեր կազմակերպության եւ մենք ներկայացրել ենք Կարոլինա adoption-ին եւ մենք ավելացրել ենք այդ ժամանակահատվածը մինչև 6 տարի ստանալու post adoption-ները։ Քանի որ անկախ այն հանգամանքից մեր երեխան ուր է գնում որ աշխարհի որ պետություն է գնում մեզ համար նրա ճակատագիրը եւ նրա ապագան շատ-շատ կարևոր է այդ դրանով է պայմանավորված որ մենք 6 տարի հետ է ունենք ուրեմն 6 տարի բանջը ցեր գոմ են տեղած է արեք արդ կազմակերպության գոմ է այո որը համաձայնացվել է արդարադատության նախարարության կենտրոնական մարմնի եւ կարոլինա ադապշն սերվիսի տնօրինության շատ լավ ճիշտ ժամանակ ներգարձեմ ուրեմն այս բարերը լսելուց հետո թիվեն կային հոլովակը որ ունենք եւ վերադառնանք ու կամ փոխճացնենք
to see these orphanages and see these children um, you know prior I've been looking at their files I see them on paper I might see a video or two but seeing them in real life and you know reaching out and playing with them and holding their hands and it totally it just it changed my view on everything that we have to do everything for these children and that it is just so important we have um, uh, 10, yeah, 10 orphanages in Armenia and more than 240 uh, yeah, children in the orphanages. Most of all uh, children in the orphanages who are available for the adoption are uh, with special needs. There is such a um, thing in Armenia, maybe this is a national thing in Armenia, when Armenians are going to adopt a child, they are uh, usually didn't adopt uh, a child with special needs. Every time they are wanted to adopt child with 100% uh, healthy children. It's nothing to be scared of, it's just uh, maybe a diagnosis. It's not seeing that diagnosis, it's not seeing, oh, this child might be older. It's seeing that they need a family and every child, you know, deserves to know the love of um, a parents and a forever family. Someone once said, you know, adopting one child won't change the world, but for that child, the world will change. When our families are adopted, uh, children with special needs, uh, I saw how our children become and more healthy and uh, very, very happy. I cannot say why Armenians didn't adopt it, uh, special needs children, but they are not going to this adoption. They want only healthy children. And now, as I said, there are several, maybe 100 children who are with special needs and who are waiting for our families, to have a family. sure if I was right but I noticed tears in your oh, yes. eyes mm -hmm. did I catch you off guard oh no so um, for me um, I was adopted from China when I was nine months old and so this job is really something that I have dreamed about for a very long time and being able to help oh. families like my mother you know complete their families and find those children that are waiting for them and so going to orphanages um, and having children you know come to you and say um, I want you to be my mother. I mean, it's it was hard not to think of them. Now the story so. becomes more touching. I didn't know you have been through the same story that <laughs> now you are creating. I congratulate you. And doubles our happiness to have you here mm -hmm. tonight. And that is really a big message. Now, what we... Արդեն ինչ-որ այնտեղ լսեցինք, ինչ-որ այստեղ ասում էիք, որ հայկական ընտանիքներ ընդհանրապես ուզում են առողջ երեխաներ։ Չեի զարմանալ մարդորեն, բայց նաև չեի զարմանալ մարդորեն, եթե այդ հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխաներ ունալուշատություն կա ցանկություն, եթե կա սեր, կա հնարավորություն, ես գտնում եմ, որ յուրականչուր ընտանիք պետք է նաև հնարավորություն ստեղծի հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխային ընտանիք բերելու համար։ Ատև ավելի շատ այս հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխաներ այսօր ընտանիքի, գուրգուրանքի, սիրո եւ հետագայում նաեւ կյանքի ապահովվածության խնդիր ունեն։ Հայաստանի հանրապետությունում այդ հարցը այսօր բավական լուրջ է դրված եւ մեր ծրագրի նպատակն է որ որքան հնարավոր է հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխաներ կարողանանք ընտանիքներում տեղավորել եւ շատ շատ կցանկանայ որպիսի հայաս հայական ծագում ունեցող հայերը հատուկ կարիքավոր երեխաներ որտեղ գրեն ուտեմ շատ շատ եմ ես կարևորում նաեւ հետագա գենի պահպանումը 
հետագալ լեզվի պահպանումը, որը կարծում եմ նաև պետականության խնդիր է։ Ես ընդունում եմ, որ նրանք չեն կործնում, շատ ամերիկացիներ ունենք, որ կոնգրետ դու կարդեն ծուցատրեցիք սամեկների ընտանիք, ովքեր որդեգրել էին դահոն սինդրոմով երեխա, մեկ հետաքրքիր բան ասեմ։ Նրանք հայերեն էին սովորել, մինչե որ եկան եկրորդ անգամ Հայաստան, և իրենց Մեկ բան եվ աս ներկացնեմ, անցյալ տարի եվ որ մենք եկանք նորից էստեղ էինք և հանդիպեցինք սամեկների ընտանիքում, նրանք մեզ դիմավորեցին, նրանց բոլոր չոր ստղաները հայկական դրոշոր և հայկական տարերով մարդկային հանտկնության բագասն է, այդ մեծ կայլը արնելու, թե ուստուկ ճիշտ եք, այսին ես ոչ թե հագաջարում եմ ծեզ, բայց իսկ ապես հանտկնություն է, նախ առաջին հերթին որ տեկրել, հատկապես այդ ընդանիքին We have less than a minute, and I would like to close it with you, Liana, because, as I said, I didn't know your message will be, I think, the strongest. Oh, just, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just, I think there are a lot of fears in adoption, and I think that nothing in this life worth having comes easily. And I just want people to know that if you are thinking about adoption and have it in your heart to, um, to bring a child home, that we are, I am very happy and my team is very happy um, to work with you every step of the way through all the paperwork um, because there is no joy greater than me calling a family and saying, we have a potential child for you. And then them coming home and saying, we are so in love. We didn't know that we could feel this kind of emotion. And it just, it brings it all back. You couldn't imagine that it would be this much joyous, mm -hmm. right? Yes. When it happens, mm -hmm. it brings the joy. Uh, unfortunately, time has limits and we have to conclude. It was pleasure having you and the other members of the team who were here before you and touching on this kind of a topic that is rarely touched upon, I guess, mm -hmm. at least within the circles here. Yev, I speak so hard, Kelly Arazatner. Thank you very much. I congratulate you all one more time. Եվ ինչպես որ լսեցիք հարկերի առազատներ, այս կանրով մեր ժամանակը գաղասնիր ավարդին խոսկ վերապերեր պաստոր են շատ նուրբ, միա ժամանակ շատ պշոց իվ նաև սիրով լեցուն թեմայի շուրջ, շնրագալություն, պարին ընձ